Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. This year we are celebrating the 10th anniversary of your favorite TV show. Once again, we have traveled all over East Africa to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need. So they can adapt and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. We support them to become more productive, get better yields, and increase their income. We meet families and enter their kitchens to explore what we eat, where we get it, and how we can cook it in cleaner, faster, healthier, and cheaper ways. And at the same time, increase family nutrition. We will see how farmers from across the region can benefit from our experts' advice. While also learn from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmers' experiences as they shape up their shambas. Welcome to the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Dear viewers, I'd like to let you know that all the filming you're about to see was done before the outbreak of the coronavirus in Kenya and Tanzania. Welcome. To Shamba Shepherd. So, Tony, I've been thinking, when you get close to retiring age, look, I'm not saying you're old. You'll need some help in your Shamba. So, where will you get it? Well, Caro, when that time comes, I will look to family for help. Exactly. And that is what we are focusing on this week. The girl child. Girl power. Well, as long as they have the power, that's all we need. Let's go. Let's go. This week, we are in Kibwezi. And we are visiting farmers John and Stella Kalovoto. And their daughter, Caro. Caro is starting to take over the farm from her father. And it looks like she's doing an excellent job. So, we want to see if we can help her even more. Caro! Yeah. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm all right. Yes, Hello, how Daddy. Yeah. Caro, yeah. how are you? I'm fine. Ah, we're yeah. so glad to be you here. You are welcomed. Thank Good. you. Good. Now, welcome, show welcome. us your shamba. Let's go and show them. Okay, right. see you later. We'll see you later. All right. Our farmers keep sheep and goats. They have maize. Do you think we can help here, Tony? I do. And we certainly don't want these chickens eating the cobs. So, let's pitch the tent. And get ready for work. But now, where is our first expert of the day? I'm sure we asked him to meet us down here in the... Ah! Eric! Eric! <laughs> I almost fell into the water. <sighs> Oof. You know, I need to conserve all my energy for the shape up. In fact, that's what you're going to be talking about. Conservation agriculture. Eric is from Parfit. We have asked Eric to help Caro boost the yield of our crops as the short rains are almost upon us and Caro is getting ready for planting. That is, if Eric doesn't frighten us to death before then. So Eric, yes. what is conservation agriculture? Let's help our farmer. Yeah, simply conservation agriculture is a way of farming where you uh, observe three main principles. And this is a, a minimum soil disturbance, Number two, crop rotation. And number three, residue retention. Okay, and today we are going to focus on the first principle, minimal soil disturbance. Yeah. What is minimum soil disturbance? Yeah, we advocate for just opening of the soil where you're going to plant the seed, where you're going to apply the manure and the fertilizer. Uh, for the big farmers, we use mechanized dripper. Uh, for the small scale farmers, we, we use a uh, hand hoe. And then uh, third, the third way of doing it is using the animal draft power, yeah. a reaper which is pulled by oxen. Wow. Yeah. Carol, what do you use in your shamba? I do use my bulls. Ah, you have bulls? Yes. And what kind of plow do you use? Disc plow. Disc plow. Yes. Do you have something better, Eric? Yes, we have reapers. Do you know about the reaper? No, 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 I don't know. Oh, you're in luck. That's why I'm here. Let's go see the reaper. Uh, Let's go see it. For Caro, as she already uses oxen drawn plow, we recommend the reaper plow. And Eric has brought one to show us. He is going to compare it with the disc plow Caro usually uses. So Caro, yes. which one here do you use? This is my jambe. Ah, this is the one. Yeah. So what's the disadvantage of using it? When we are talking about minimum soil disturbance, mm -hmm. this is disturbing the soil maximally. Stunning it. <laughs> yes, yes. Two, we can't achieve the, the desired depth, which you want. Yes. And the penetration of the roots of your plant mm -hmm. won't go deeper because of the hardpan. 
The hard palm lies around 15 centimeters below the surface of the soil. It is formed by repeated plowing of the land, compacting the soil into a hard layer. This forms a barrier to plant roots. So, a reaper can be set to plow deeper into the soil compared to the disc plow and break the hard pan, allowing the plant roots to reach moisture and nutrients deeper down in the soil. So now, what do you have that is better than the disc plow? Yeah, we have our reaper here. That's uh, the reaper. This is the reaper we are talking <laughs> about. Number one, uh, we have a point here. This point helps us in uh, breaking the hard pan. This is just the body and these are the wings. Mm -hmm. You see, mm. so helping in opening, opening the, the, the uh, soil. Yeah. Then uh, here we have a depth wheel. This is the wheel which determines the depth you want to achieve. We advise our farmers to achieve at least 15 to 20 centimeters depth. Big biro pen is 15 centimeters oh. or six six inches. In, uh, in other words, we can have a demonstration here to see if we can achieve the depth. You see. So, a reaper can be set to plow deeper into the soil compared to the disc plow and breaks the hard pan, allowing the plant roots to reach moisture and the nutrients deeper down in the soil. Eric's colleagues, Josphat and Caro's parents, John and Stella, are going to demonstrate for us. As we can see, it's not only the plow that's better, the yoke is too. Unlike the traditional yoke used in the disc plow, this yoke is designed to keep the cows the exact distance apart so that it's easier to space the planting lines. This one is just one rip line. Come back with another rip line, you have achieved Precisely. your next step. Precisely. In this area, the rip lines should be 90 centimeters apart. Wow, that's amazing. Look at how it's working. I'm very impressed. Uh -huh. Normally, how long does it take you to plow this particular piece of land? Uh, two to three hours. Uh, we are going to take here between 30 to 35 minutes. As quick? Yes. Okay, now, when you're using the reaper, what other advantage does it have to the farmer, especially when it comes to water conservation? Yeah, you see, we've said that we are just opening where we are going to put your fertilizer, your manure, and your seeds. So the advantage is that everything will be collected in that same point. So you will be guaranteed your crops will 100% utilize the resources available. Mm -hmm. Then, above that, when it rains, all water comes into the rape lines. Mm -hmm. So you are so sure your plants will get enough water to take them through production. Yes. Yeah. You save uh, of almost 75% of your time, energy, and cost. And above all, we are going now to improve our yield. Between 30-40% increase of yield in the first implementation of uh, conservation agriculture. That's huge. Yeah, but That's with the time, it increases and increases. Most of all, more profit. More profit, exactly. Our next story comes not from the farm, but from a shop nearby. Mr. Jonathan Mutinda runs a local store and it's very popular. One of the main reasons is his fridge that keeps drinks nice and cold. You might think, well, that's not so special, but it is. In this area, there is no regular electricity supply. So, how does Mr. Mutinda keep the drinks cool? Well, with solar power and an M copper solar fridge, there are three solar panels on the roof. Power from these panels feed a regulator linked to a 12 volt battery. It's enough to keep the fridge running all day. But solar fridges are not just for shopkeepers. I want to see if one can help our farmer as well. So, Mweni, yes. you have goats. Yes. When you slaughter a goat and I know you have cats you eat today, yes. and I know there will be some that remains. Yes. What do you do with it? I don't throw it. Would you love it if you can be able to find a solution where you can use it for later when you're ready and it is going to be still fresh? Yeah, yeah I will be very happy. Mm -hmm. yes. We have an expert. Okay. Are you ready to meet him? I'm very. Really? Really. Let's go. Uh, let's Come go. On. Now, I can't wait to see what Carol thinks of our solar fridge. And I see our expert, Christopher Kingo from M Copper, is here now as well. Very good. Ah, lovely. Some nice cold drinks. And biscuits too. Now, let's see if Christopher can convince our farmer to get a solar fridge. Niko na mambo mapi ya kumambia, atoke kwa hizo mambo sakale, aingie dikito, kupitia fridge ya sola ya mkopa. Kitu ya kwanza, 
Mm. Inatoa mwangasa kwa jua, kwa miara oh. ya jua tu. Inachukua mwangasa inaweka moto kwa betri. Okay. Friji inachukua moto kwa betri. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Betri ikija mm -hmm. inagurumisha fridge. Mm -hmm. Friji ndani inakaa namna hii. Yeah. Hata unamaanisha mm. tunaweza weka soda na chakula pia kama hii nyama naiona hapo. Ya yeah, unaweza weka soda. Mm -hmm. Unaweza weka fyakula. Mm -hmm. Boka. Christopher, kwa yeah. ufupi unasema hii fridge inafanya kazi kama tu hizo fridge zingine. Zile zingine tu. Kitu wote ambao unaweza kaka kwa ile fridge unaweka pia kwa hii fridge. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Jonathan, have you benefited because of owning this kind of fridge? Fridge na nisaidia kwa ninauza soda. Mhm. Mm Alafu naweka masiwa. Mhm. Mm Mimi chai. Naam. Kama ni nyama. Mm -hmm. Naenda na napima huko nyama kama ni ambuzi kama ni angombe napima naweka mm. kesho yake mimi napikia watu na. hii ni hoteli eh. kwa hivyo fridge inanisaidia watu wa mkopa wamenisaidia eh. kwa hivyo hata chakula yako ikibaki hotelini ile ambayo unajua unaweza kutumia uweze kutupa eh, unaweka kwenye fridge inabaki bado fresh eh ndio mhm mm imeniokolea eh. kwa sababu hakuna stima mimi nalipa eh. nalipa fridge nalipa na mkopa huko so you will recommend to Mweni to buy this kind of fridge. Sasa Mweni wewe utakimbilia kwa kwa agent. Eh. Wendo uzungumze na yeye akuletee fridge yenyewe ni nzuri. Na ikiwa na tatizo unapika simu kwa hao. Wanatuma pundi. Si hadi unaenda kutuambia pundi wa ile ile malocal wa kuja kutengenezea. Ah. Piombo yao ndio hao ni hao hao tu kutengeneza. So you trying to say it has warranty? Yeah, iko na warranty wa miaka 3. Kama iko na tatizo yenyewe, anawajulisha customer care, wanatuma fundi, anakuja kuangalia shida ni nini. And uh, Christopher, what is the mode of payment? Unaweza kuipata kwa mkopo kwa malipo ya polepole. Pole. Mwanzo unatupea deposit. Unatupea 10999. 10999 tunakupea siku tano ya bure mhm ya kukuja enjoy mhm haya kutoka hapo naanza kulipa 165 okay unalipa kila siku muda wa kulipa ni siku 700 itakuwa total 126499 how much will it cost if i want to pay in cash 1100 1100 yeah yeah so the M Copper fridge is not only reliable, affordable, but you know what? It saves time and Wow. So what do you think of that, Tony? Carol, that ripper is going to save a lot of money in the long term. Mhm. Mm Beautiful. And so does a fridge, especially if it is solar powered. Well, coming up after the break, how to reduce post-harvest losses and cooking with an electric pressure cooker. But first, thanks to your reports, we managed to get rid of the desert locust in most of Kenya. However, in the last couple of weeks, we have seen the return of locust in some areas. These are the areas that are currently affected by the desert locust in Kenya. Most locusts have been reported in Samburu. Some locusts have also been reported in Turkana. And a few locusts have been reported in Marsabit, Laikipia, and West Pokot. We are seeing many new swarms of locusts forming. They are expected to move across the borders to Ethiopia, South Sudan, Sudan, and Uganda. The desert locusts are like a fire. You as an individual farmer cannot control them. As we saw, local authorities have teams that can spray the locusts with special chemicals that will control them. It is important you continue to report and tell us whether you have seen locusts in your area. Tell us if you have seen the black and yellow hoppers, the pinky mature locusts, or the yellow mature locusts. Here is what to do. Send the word locust to the number 0748-153-120. For you smartphone users, you can also text locust to 0207-640-202. And we will get in touch with you. Welcome back to Shamba Shape Up. 
We are in Kibwezi. And we are visiting farmer Carol Kalovoto. We have seen how to plow with a reaper. And how to keep cool with a solar-powered fridge. But we also want to find out about reducing post-harvest losses. And cooking with an electric pressure cooker. So, no time to waste? Let's get back to work. Farmers are sending us many questions through Aishamba to know more about COVID-19 and how to cope even as they do their farming. Welcome to Q&A. Battling uncertain weather caused by climate change is a struggle, but it's a fight we must win by learning to be more efficient and productive. This week, we have Joseph Chege from Eka Africa to help us answer some of your questions. Joseph, what types of insurance are available for farmers out there? There are different types of insurance products, um, especially when you're targeting uh, farming communities. To list a few, we have um, index-based insurance products like um, Rainfall Index. This is, this is an insurance product that covers you for rainfall extremities or drought, then you're covered without uh, insurance companies basically sending um, an agronomist to come to assess your farm. This is the easiest um, insurance product to offer to smallholder farmers. Then uh, we have uh, uh, indemnity-based insurance products whereby as an insurance company you have to visit the farms, verify uh, the risk details, monitor how the, uh, the season is unfolding, and then uh, uh, you pay claims based on the uh, the yield these farmers harvest at the end of the season. Does this insurance cover all the crops? Right now, we have, you know, a rainfall index insurance product for almost all the crops. Uh, field crops like uh, maize, beans, coffee, sorghum, uh, barley, uh, and wheat. But we uh, keep on insisting and telling farmers uh, insurance cannot work alone. It has to be complemented with other risk mitigation measures like good agricultural practices and choice of uh, stress-tolerant varieties, for instance, and are getting uh, good and reliable agricultural ex extension services. It's a combination of so many factors uh, that farmers need to, to embrace. And there you have it. If you'd like more information on links to markets, financial institutions, and even off-takers for contract farming, get in touch with iShamba. I'm off to meet our next expert, Rosemary Babu from World Food Programme. She's here to help our farmer avoid post service losses through better drying and storing of grains and pulses. So Rosemary, how serious is uh, this problem of post harvest losses, especially in Africa? So in Africa we are seeing that 40% uh, of all the food that is produced is lost due to post harvest losses. Mm -hmm. And this occurs across the whole supply chain, from the moment the farmers are harvesting it, to transportation, how they dry it, and how they're storing it. And today we are going to focus uh, majorly on storage. Wow, yes. that sounds interesting. I can't wait to meet our expert Howard. I see he's waiting for us patiently there with our farmer. Let's go meet them. So Rosemary has invited Howard Moguera from AgroZed. He is inspecting the grain store with our farmer Caro. Caro has some bags of green grams all ready for storage, but are they ready to go in? Or does Caro need to make some more improvements to the store first? I can see from the condition of your store that there are a lot of uh, holes on the side, big holes, which means that it is easy for rodents, easy for insects to get in, which means they will eat your crop and lower the quality of your crop. Uh -huh. yes. So for today, what do you suggest we do to help our farmer Caro? I have seen that she has another store right over there where she has been putting some maize cobs. We can clean that up and demonstrate to her good storage practices. Ah, that would be wonderful and I'm sure Carol would love that, wouldn't you? Eh, eh, okay. Now, you said before storing any grain, it should be dried first. Yes. Carol, how do you dry your grain? Sincerely speaking, yes. we do not dry our grains. What's the danger of that, Howard? You increase your chances of, of getting aflatoxin, yes. which is poisonous. And because this is your means of survival, you are losing out on income that would be very good for you if you were to sell your grains. Uh -huh. What do you recommend farmers to do if they really want to dry their pulses or their beans? We are using AgroZ taplins. We have it right over there. Ah, let's go have a look at the tapolin. Yeah, mm -hmm. Now, Howard, explain to us what's going on here. This is one of the ways that she should start drying her pulses, and specifically these cowpeas, 
to get the 14% moisture content that is required. Mm -hmm. what, what makes this tarpaulin different from, from the others? The agrozet tarpaulins, first of all, they have a dark green color. Okay. Dark green to olive brown ensures that when it's sunny, the tarpaulin can absorb the heat from the sun and in the process can dry the grains from the bottom up. Okay. So you don't have to go turning around the grains to make sure that it dries evenly. Wow. Excellent. Using a tarpaulin also helps keep dirt and diseases from getting onto the grain and molds like aflatoxin from growing. So after you know that your grain is dry, where do you store it? In our normal bags. Is that correct? So for storage purposes, AgroZ has developed the AgroZ Bag Plus, which is a hermetic bag. Mm -hmm. And the, the purpose of the hermetic bag is to control oxygen transmission into the bag to deny the insects any chance of breathing and therefore they die. Any pest can die off because of suffocation. When the inner bag is correctly tied, it keeps out the air. So any pests already inside will die. And the tough outer bag will stop any new pests from getting in. This way, they can't eat your grain. So no need to use pesticides. Better still, the bag can be reused for up to three seasons. But what if you have too much grain and your store is too small? We have here what we call a hermetic silo. This silo takes about five to six uh, 100 kg bags of commodity. It has a tap. When you need to get some grains out, you don't have to open the top because when you open the top, you're letting in air. You can see that the cover has a rubber seal, so no air will be able to get into the, into the silo. Mm -hmm. So you cover it well, once you put your grain, and then you use this to seal off the air completely. Yes. Whatever insects are within, uh, within the silo, now that there's no more oxygen coming in, they will die. Wow. Yeah. Very innovative. And are they available? Yes, they are available within mm. Kenya. Good, good. I'll even be more happier when I see the store, how they have worked on it. Let's go have a look. Well, this looks fantastic. The bags are off the floor and away from the walls. So they will keep dry and away from any rodents that might come in. And by using hermetic bags and silos, farmers can store their grain longer. So they can sell when the price is high. So it's time for our final shape up of the day. Mweni, that's our farmer Carol's camber name, cooks using wood for fuel, but it's expensive and bad for your health. Smoke from kitchens is one of the biggest killers of women and children in Africa. Mweni has an alternative, electricity, but until now, she's not thought of cooking with it. So I'm taking her to meet Wairimo and Jay here, who has something new to show her. Wairimo is an expert at cooking using an electric pressure cooker. So, Mweni, eh? where do you get this firewood? Um, I do buy them. You buy them? Okay. How much do you buy? Let's say you want to make a uh, lunch. It's around 100 to 200. 100 to 200? Okay. Okay, let's say maybe 100 mm. for one meal. And health-wise, does it affect you? Eh, mm -hmm. it affects me. Mm. For example, mm -hmm. I can have a chest. The chest problem. Also the highest. Uh -huh. yeah. All right. Would you, would you like something better? If you can do it, mm. surely I can be very happy. You can be very happy. Very happy. So, Wairimo, mm -hmm. over to you. Say goodbye to tears. Okay, thank you. Uh, <laughs> say goodbye to tears. Yeah. Because goodbye of electricity, tears. no tears. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. No going to gather electricity. Mm. It's just at the socket. You mm -hmm. can just switch it on. Are yeah. you sure? No mm. gathering of, power, of anything. You don't need to go and look for power. Mm. Oh, power Jesus. Is oh, Jesus. Mm. Wow. Oh. I see you are happy. <laughs> that is really wonderful. That is nice. So here we have an electric pressure cooker. Yeah. When you hear this pressure, one. you start getting worried. Yeah. It's gonna burn you. Yeah. No, 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 no. Okay. This one is very, very safe. It has a locking method mm. that locks very well. Okay. It ensures this pot is locked. Okay. So that is one of the safety features about it. Mm. When you cook with it, it doesn't get hot outside. Mm. 
so it is safe to touch okay. and you will see for yourself it okay. doesn't get hot okay. so this is an energy meter so we have already said this 23 shillings here you're seeing yeah. is the cost of one unit of power okay. so we are going to see how much we are going to use mm. the same meal you're going to cook with 100 shillings on the fire on the firewood the fire mm. Mm. so we'll go straight into cooking okay so today wairimo is going to be cooking african lamb stew go to our menu we want to saute saute means to fry so for now we're not covering it's not under pressure mm. we are going to put our onion in yes. you can hear the, the noise mm -hmm. it already smells good i have my garlic and ginger here garlic is very good for you it keeps your immunity up mm. ah. ginger is very good for the tummy when you're cooking make sure that you make your food wholesome mm -hmm. so that it is useful to your body so now I'll add in the meat, which has been washed. Mm -hmm. oh, wonderful. We'll add in peas, mm -hmm. garden peas, the tomatoes. With our African culture, our meal is not complete without potatoes. Uh -huh. So we are going to put in some uh, potatoes. Yes. Mix them up. So we'll put in our hoho, also very rich in vitamin C. Mm -hmm. So I'll add in some seasoning, which gives food flavor mix everything together mm. so we'll just put in just a little bit of water to cover it just to give us some soup a little bit we are ready to cover our pot and uh, start cooking under pressure mm. Mm. Ah, excellent so we go for menu and it is P1 so we are going to go ahead with that um, so I have a question so does it mean maybe if I go to work or if maybe she needs to go graze the goats and she knows she's going to come back around 12, is there a way that she can leave something cooking and come and find it ready? Oh yes, that is the beauty of the pressure cooker. So you can leave this like this and go for even four hours. When you come back, you'll find it has finished cooking and it is already on the keep warm method. So the lamb stew is cooking and amazingly we only had to wait 20 minutes and the food was ready. This is compared to around two hours to cook lamb stew using wood for fuel. Our food has finished cooking. We can open it at any time now uh, when we are ready. If you notice we have cooked with how much? The cost is 10 shillings 56 cents. And that is what a tenth of what you use because you use 100 shillings to cook the same meal. So now we open. Wow. Oh, oh my goodness. Doesn't it look wonderful? Wonderful. Mm, it smells good. So you remember the dania that I had? We are now putting in our dania, yes. which will add flavor to the food and color. It is garnish. Wow. The food is colorful and it is uh, enticing. You look at it and you want to eat. Yeah. Wow. wow. It's wonderful. Wow, that was so delicious. Another triumph for Shamba Shape Up. Well, Caro, that African lamb stew look delicious. I'm so jealous. Now, let's see what our farmer thinks of our shape. Huh? What would you say has been your greatest inspiration? What has made you happy? First, I have education on conservation agriculture. Uh -huh. When I practice conservation agriculture, I will gain more from my garden okay, yes. than before. Yes. Karo, if you are happy, we are also happy. Karo. We are happy. I hope the viewers at home are happy too. Okay. Yes. And so we'll see you in the next Shamba! Shamba.